Hello, this is the, the third in a, a sequence of potentially four videos about Plato and ClearWin Plus. In this one, I'm just going to go through a demonstration program looking at different aspects of ClearWin Plus. Uh, and uh, here we'll be taking a context of FTN 95, but also potentially G Fortran, I Fort, or any other third party compiler. I'm not sure that this particular video is going to be that helpful, but uh, try it and see how you get on. The next one will be slightly different and will aim to take a, a complete ClearWin project from beginning to end, something fairly simple, uh, but it's introducing different format codes and uh, tying all the different uh, components together into a complete application. <clears throat> this particular demo uh, contains, well, let me run it just to show you what's uh, there. First of all, I'm going to work at least initially uh, with Fortran, uh, FTN95 rather than G Fortran and I Fort. And we can change that later as we go through. So let's just see what comes up first of all. Essentially, what I have in this uh, application is a, a number of buttons in, in the main program. This is the main program here. And each line corresponds to a different button. So that one, hello world, is the first button. You find the button embedded here in this format string percent BB gives you a button. And <clears throat> the, the format code is the same for each line. So it's been put into a, a character parameter. And the details are not that important, but each uh, button accesses a, a callback function and those are listed here and appear in the code as we go through. So this first snippet, uh, this first uh, sub-program uh, corresponds to the hello world. So what I'll do is I'll go through fairly quickly each of these buttons, pointing out uh, s some of the features uh, as, as we go through. Hello world. <laughs> produces that dialogue and you can see in the text where that comes from is contained in this function and there is nothing more than just win io dollar and then the string with an exclamation mark and that's all you get <clears throat> the next one it says message box and this time the code is here And you can see the caption and uh, some text. And then we've got a button, OK button with percent BB, and another one with cancel on it. These are all fairly simple. So let's move on. Now we come to. Oh, yes, that's, uh, let me just have a look at that return value. There's a, a value come out of that at the end. And let's just notice that there's no, there's an ampersand on each of these statements here at the end. And this is the last one without an ampersand. So that corresponds to the end of that dialogue. When that dialogue closes, another uh, dialogue comes up with the uh, result and it says winio returns a value and the clock percent wd and iw is the return from the clearing dollar call 
and here it says that for the button that I clicked, the return is zero. Let's just run it again and see what happens. Message box and click on OK. Return value is one. The message box, click on cancel. Return value is two. So, and uh, that's, uh, that's the output that we get. Okay, the data input and output comes next. That's the dialog that you get. And here is the code for it. Let's see how far we get with this one. And then the ampersand is there, there, and, and right to the end. So <clears throat> this time we have a, a integer input that corresponds to percent RD with an integer. And you have a, a real input which corresponds to an RF, which is there. <clears throat> Now, each of those has a f following format code. You've got an RD there, and this one is an RD with a graph, and that's for the output. And the same here, there's an RF with a graph. And the graph means it's read only and it get no box around the outside of it and it gives you the the result uh, the output for that particular value so as i change the value the result changes and it's the value in the box changes and the the value in the code changes also we've got an sent il which is an integer limit on the value of that uh, comes shortly and that's uh, here an rd the value of n has an integer limit of 256 so as i type in a value larger than 256 i i get in fact in this case a, a marker an icon to say it's uh, a, 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 in an error value and the result in fact is the largest value possible within that range that's provided and that uh, icon there is a result of using the uh, tilde on the percent il okay let's move on from input and output to the images and here we get some different images which we can see uh, in this list of winao statements uh, we've got percent ob and that's uh, used to generate a box with uh, five items in one row so the 5.1 refers to the number of boxes and the each of those boxes has a corresponding percent cb to close the box and so there will be five of those in total <clears throat> and the first image that uh, appears in the first box is a, is uh, a standard icon And actually, as I uh, hover over that particular image, you'll notice that the word standard icon appears down below <clears throat> and their bitmap appears and so on. And that's because of this text here, which is called a help text. It comes from the, the question mark or a re result of the question mark in the, in the format code. <clears throat> and uh, that... Uh, image appears that text appears as a result of of hovering over that particular image so what else do we have here we've got a bitmap we have an, 
an, an icon with a specified name and an, an image with a specified name and another one and the this first one is a standard icon here and then the next one is a jpeg image apparently from the help string that comes up and the last one is a, a png image so the, the question arises where, where do those um resources uh, reside how, how do you get to them well <clears throat> if you were using ftn95 on its own then you might have a resources um command at the bottom of the main after the main program but that's not possible when you're using g fortran or i fort uh, and it, for a third party compiler you will have to provide a resource script with the uh, components uh, presented as a script so that the names that appear in the uh, list here like uh, icon one and so on all correspond to rows uh, and files that are part of the the project <laughs> so i this one is an icon and that's the file for containing that particular icon so if i uh look at open the uh, that particular folder you, you i've actually imported a number of different icons to use in this particular project and the one i'm looking at here is red icon that one which i can open i can actually i can open that in plato <clears throat> and you can see what you get um and if you really want to, you could actually edit that within Plato, but there are easier editors to use uh, than the one that Plato provides. But that just shows you <coughs> what, what's in that particular file. So <coughs> whenever we're accessing resources images uh, in the program, then we will need a corresponding resource file, and, and that will be uh, included automatically by Plato uh, when we choose to compile uh, in using GFortran or i4 it will still still work <clears throat> so that that really gives us all of the points of interest uh, in in that particular program So let's move on to checkboxes. The code this time is here. And uh, let's see what's in that one. Okay, we've got a radio button uh, in, again, it's a box, two bo a box with two items on one row. <clears throat> and the first one is a radio button and you see that it goes on and off together the second one involves a check box and they're not uh, ganged together so you can set those independently so in the code we have uh, a radio button present rb and uh, another one rb there and this is RB with a graph for a checkbox. And there's another one there. <clears throat> and each of these have uh, their own uh, integer uh, control variable, which is set when you, uh, or, or unset as you select different items in the dialogue. <clears throat> So I think that's about all we can say about that particular dialogue. Let's uh, move on to the next one, which is list boxes. And here, this is a simple list. 
and that comes from percent L S percent L S there, and uh, that has uh, some has an array of character strings, and the data is input here. Uh, as we select different items from the list box, then the result appears on the right hand side. That is the result of selecting a, a particular item from the list. So there we have uh, K1, K1 as the selection, and then the value of it is presented as a uh, percent RD with a graph accent for uh, a read only value. And then the drop down combo box here, it comes out in the form percent graph LS. It has the same array of strings and a different result, which is presented after the control. So here for cherries, we get the results of value three. Okay, let's move on. Menus and accelerator keys. This time uh, we have a file and exit in the main menu, edit, cut, copy, set in the next one. And then we have a radio button and an OK. So let's see where that comes from. The main menu has percent MN and file exit. That's the uh, main components file and exit. I'm sorry, that's not quite right. It, the file has drop downs, exit. There you go. And uh, the edit main menu item has cut. And it also has copy and set. Now, the exit is simple, but the cut, copy, and set are slightly different in that uh, you've got a tilde on the copy and you've got a hash on the set. And the, the tilde is used for enabling and disabling a particular element, a particular menu item, and the uh, hash is used for providing a uh, check, check mark, checkbox. So for example, if I click on set, then the next time you'll see it's got a, a check against it. Click on it, and the next time it's not checked. Uh, it's possible also to disable the copy part. Now that's grayed out because there is a, a, a gray control which is enabled and disabled here on that button, on that radio button. So that's now not disabled. So each of these has a callback, but um, well, let's see what the callback does. I think it may do something. If we say edit cut, then at the moment it just produces a dialogue to say that that um, callback function has been called. So you can see that uh, in the code, you've got a callback. And <clears throat> here, the callback dis either displays cut or copy or paste, depending on which one you're using. And the display is simply a, a dialogue to uh, put out a message. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing is that we we do have a status bar which is showing uh, help text for each of these 
items as we as we hover over them. So the status for X is the, the status bar is saying close it. So if we look in the uh, details here, you'll find that uh, there is um, a text, a help text there, corresponding to the question mark. There is a help text which is uh, used, and that appears in this a status bar. And uh, here we we'll see that the status bar is indicated by a percent SP, and the graph. Uh, it means that the um, status text, the help text for menu items, automatically appears in this status bar. So that's uh, giving you this effect of having the help text appear directly in the status bar. So that's, oh, you've, we also have a pop up menu for a particular control. And so as I right click on that uh, uh, edit box, I get another set of menu items in a pop up menu for that particular control. And that's generated by this percent CM. And it's the same sort of thing, but it's now a, a pop-up menu for a particular control. And uh, e equally, the, well, I was going to say you get status text there, but you don't because that's not provided. It, it, that's not provided in the code. Finally, you've got accelerator keys uh, and the control and X also generates that particular callback function. So if I uh, press Control and X, then that's telling me that that, that accelerator key has been activated and, and it has that effect. OK, so that's uh, simple menus and accelerator keys. Now we're moving on to tab, the tab view, and here we have the code in forms that, and it's formed in the, on the basis of three separate components. Each of these uh, has ampersands, but terminates with a one without an ampersand. So that's a separate uh, window for part of the tab sheets or what if it were for one element in the in the tab sheets there are, there are two together and that's the first that's the second and they're grouped together in, in a main window that comes at the end so <clears throat> as i start this tab view what we end up with is a tab view with two sheets. If I uh, type something in that edit box and then move to the other one and type something in that one, and you can see that they are different and you can select from one to the other. And each of these so-called sheets has its own caption, sheet one and sheet two. These are the separate components, like the separate windows, which are sort of layered to produce the uh, tab view in the end. <clears throat> and <clears throat> each of these has, uh, well, a certain font, a certain font size, and a back background color. But the main thing is it has an edit box produced by percent RE and a corresponding uh, buffer to go with it. This is exactly the same. It just happens to have a different buffer, but otherwise it, it's almost the same. Anyway, you've got a sheet two uh, and some controls which uh, cause the whole thing to link together. In this one, in the first sheet, you have uh, an integer uh, 
value, which is used uh, in order to, so that you provide those integer values when you set up the property sheet or tab view, which is percent PS. So those separately separate components are joined together, linked together into one property sheet or one tab view, as it's called here. So there we've got the background caption, the uh, the caption and the background color is button face. And uh, again, we've got some a font setting and and uh, an exit button, a button to press with exit on it. So that illustrates the basic idea behind the tab views. Okay, moving on. Next one is a, a graphics region. This one is a bit more complicated and I'll just give some of the details about this. Here we've got an uh, exit and help. I think exit will go out straight away, so we, that's not very useful. Uh, let's uh, go again and help. It uh, gives us a dialogue. It tells us how to use this particular uh, application. It says click and drag and release to draw a line. Hold down the shift key to draw a rectangle or the control key to draw an ellipse. So if I just hold, just select and drag, that produces a line. If I hold down the shift key and that produces a rectangle, now I'm holding down the control key and it produces a, an ellipse. The uh, as I drag across, notice that the coordinates and the, the mouse state are, are being displayed in a, a status bar. So we've got various things going on there, and we can sort of see where those things come from in the main program. <clears throat> uh, the here, here is the, the main part of the program. It, the essence of the construction is percent GR, and that uh, up arrow uh, indicates that we've got a callback function attached. Um, the background color is provided, and that's the background color for the graphics area. You've got box selection is what's providing all of this uh, uh, effect of dragon. And then we've got smooth eight, which I, I won't bother describing at the moment. The size is 300 by 300. And really there's not much else in this first part that you haven't seen before. But the essence of it is that the way in which uh, the callback reacts is all built into the code. And, and I, I, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but if you're interested, you could read through the details and see how you can uh, draw a rectangle or, or an ellipse or a, or a straight line, uh, depending on the state of the mouse uh, at that point and the, and the state of the keyboard. All right, so that brings that to an end of the graphics. Now we've got a graph plotting, and here's a very simple uh, graph, which we can see. And uh, this time we're going to, this is the main part, setting up the graphics parameters for, for the, a graph and and uh, the, the the kind of thing we can see here is that it's simply a, a graph that's drawn with certain axes it happens to be uh, have a pivot on which means that you can make it uh, larger or smaller uh, and as you move the uh, mouse over the graph you find the 
uh, in the status bar the coordinates of the point and the corresponding graph value uh, at that point. So at the moment it's on the point four six horizontally and point six two vertically. <clears throat> so again, there are lots of details here which really we not need to go into at the moment. But if you're interested in drawing graphs, then you could use that as a starting point uh, for 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 your program for your development. Let's go on to the next one. This is a very simple one in a way. It's a slider. And there are two types of slider in this one. The first one, uh, you limits. The upper and lower limits are, are provided here. And uh, uh, th that's the, the value. The lower limit is 0. The upper limit is 10. And then the, the closed box, so that, that open and closed box produces this box around the, the slider. And then we have another, uh, oh, in fact, the result is presented first. Uh, and then we ha have uh, a another control. This time we don't need uh, percent. OB for box, it's provided automatically. And we have percent SL for the slider. The 30 gives us the length of it. And the then we it's it has a, a border automatically because of the control options. Uh, and then it, it actually says it has a tool tip which is placed in the top position that gives you the value that we can see as as the slider moves and we have a, a, a current value and the lower and the upper value current value uh, starts off at five the lower value is zero the upper value is 10 so that's the effect that we're getting and as we move it the tooltip is providing the the current value for that slider Okay, that slider moving on now to progress bar. That uh, ha it has a, a tooltip, which is quite a smart tooltip, comes up there. Uh, uh, as we click on that button, the uh, progress bar is filled. So, how is that appearing? Well, okay, let's have a look. It appears as a percent BR, and the 20 gives you the length. Percentage means that it's got the percent in the middle of it. And then you've got D for a variable uh, containing the amount of fill. You've got the uh, color present is as uh, RGB dollar, as the red, green, and blue. So it's fully red. And <clears throat> That's uh, basically it. The tool help percent th is providing this uh, um, help for the particular button. That is a tool tip, and then you've got the button itself, and the button uh, has. In, as well as the uh, sort of message which comes up in the tooltip, it's also got something before it which is uh, giving you the effect that we see. Uh, it's actually it's got an icon and then click to start. And that icon is generated by this star here and the pipe symbols are separate and one from another, one component from another. So that's uh, something you can see uh, when you come to look at the, the details of percent th uh, when you, and when you use the, the balloon uh, as the option.
After that, we've got a toolbar. Um, this one is actually quite complex. It's actually pivoted as well. That percent PV adjusts adjusts the size. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I shall only go into this briefly because it's quite complicated. But if you're interested in using uh, percent uh, MV for a toolbar, uh, then this produces this provides a very uh, well short way should I say it's not that easy to get started but it's a short way to get get into um, into toolbars so <clears throat> it was quickly what are we using here well it's percent MB in this list and um, Well, there, there is the MB. It has a, uh, various parts to it. It's adjustable and it has arrows. And uh, the main components are uh, style and a button ID and a button order. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the uh, components here depend upon the bitmap that's used to generate this. And rather than uh, spend a lot of time on this, I think if anybody really wants to know about toolbars, perhaps it needs a separate tutorial because this is quite lengthy. So let's um, just move on from that. By all means, look at that. Uh, in the demo code, if you're interested, uh, but let's move on and leave that one uh, for now. So after the toolbar, we have a tree view, which uh, appears like that. You can expand the different nodes, contract the nodes, and the <clears throat> the tree view, in fact, comes out. It's called a uh, percent bv for branch view uh, and it has buttons it has lines and it has lines at roots and it has paired bitmaps and so on uh, and all of these uh, things you can see uh, and you can change those to see what the effect is of of uh, though having them and not having them but the basic construction is fairly straightforward it's it's a, it's um a number of character in a form of an array and uh, each of these has some control uh, codes uh, in the form of letters in this particular case it's got three letters to control the, the position and the state of the the tree and you have to set those according to what you you need uh, the first you see you've got an A, B, and C. That corresponds to the level into the tree, the first level, second level, the third level. And then the second character here uh, describes um, the state uh, of, uh, of that particular node, whether it's uh, a C or an E, E for expanded, C for collapsed. And then <clears throat> there's a a letter at the end uh, which uh, signifies something which I escapes me just for the minute. But you can look at the uh, details of percent BV uh, by opening the help file for that to find out uh, what the each of these characters means. Then after a tree view, we have a list view. Uh, and again, this one is quite complicated in the sense there are lots of details here. Uh, and you can see how to uh, use this particular illustration by looking at the instructions to see what you can do. 
you can add uh, items to the list and uh, remove them and you can set the color or you can use the colors for each one and you can actually change the kind of view that you get uh, whether it's report which you started off with or different uh, icons or uh, list view uh, and report is what we've had at the beginning and each of these has uh, different um, fields uh, and uh, again it's um, quite powerful but uh, quite a lot of work to get into that uh, but if you want to use a list view then you can use this example as a starting point and then finally uh, we have this I've gone past the list view and we come to this last one using the API. Now, <clears throat> in this particular demonstration, we've you'll find that this, not only are we using the ClearWin interface into the uh, but by means of ISOC binding, not only are we using that in ClearWin, but uh, we have this, the same sort of thing for some of the Windows API functions. And we have a list of all of the standard uh, parameters in the API, or most, a lot of them anyway. And so these are being used at different places in the program. Uh, and in particular, uh, when we come to this last example, uh, each of these buttons is here, we've got a button for input, output, and input and output. And those are referring to different callbacks, one, two, and three. Uh, and as we look at those different callbacks to see what's happening, uh, you find some of the details. The first thing is that it's called message box and message box is uh, defined or has an interface in uh, here in MS WinAPI. Uh, and so you'll find it in, in that particular uh, file and the interface is in there. <clears throat> and But the, the key to it is that not only do we call that Microsoft function, but uh, it, it passes a string in a particular way. So let me just uh, illustrate by clicking on that. And it says, click OK to continue. And it's got a, so message box takes a, a handle and then a string for the text and a string for the caption. And then finally that zero correspond to the OK button and you can change it to get other types of combinations of buttons. <clears throat> but the main thing to notice here is that the string has been preceded or at least uh, is embedded and in, in, involves a call to Cistra dollar. And that is a mechanism for handling strings when you come to use a third party compilers uh, let's look at the next one uh, that one says using the api so let's have a look at what's happening there this is the second one and <clears throat> and and there we see it in fact using the api is the caption to the window uh, so yes, I can I can remember now that using the API is the the text for that parent window, and that's what we're retrieving uh, at the moment. But the point is that it is uh, an output string, and that's what we're we're aiming to to get at this stage. So <clears throat> when we uh, want to retrieve a string from as a result of a call to a Windows API function, then we need to use co string 
uh, to provide the address. And then <clears throat> having returned from that call, we can then use C out string to, to fill that character string with the result of that call. And then we simply uh, display that result. So the first case, it was a, a, a situation where the string is used for input. The second is where the string is used for output. And then the third illustration is where the string is used for both input and output. And it, you see in this particular case, we're using the function uh, path find on path. That's a Windows API function. It's used in order to, to find the uh, path of FTN95. It's, in other words, it searches the path until it finds that particular uh, folder and, and file. In my case, I actually have an FTN95 in a folder which is called uh, CFTN95. It's not the, the, the main Silverfrost one. So that's what it's come up with. <clears throat> but in, the point is that you have, in this case, uh, a call to a function which has uh, a string as both an input and an output. The, the um, first argument is simply an, a string which is input as the the base name for the file and the output is the full and qualified path name for the file so when you need to uh, have call an api function which has both input and output of strings then that is the way that it's handled now all of that is is not necessary when you're using uh, ftn95 it becomes much simpler but uh, it, th that's the way it has to be handled, or, or to be handled at least, uh, for calls to the window API. So that that's is a fairly detailed and comprehensive uh, outline of of the features that you you get in in many of the cases where you're creating uh, clear win applications. So in the following uh, tutorial, I, you might find that that is perhaps simpler and more direct. And uh, if you haven't found this tutorial helpful, I hope you'll still look at the next one. Uh, thank you for, for listening. <laughs>